We're just going to get some emergency milk for breakfast. Jasper's having a meltdown. <laughs> I was gonna just go to the garage and pick up some milk quickly, but there's a huge queue. Thank God we don't need petrol. We've got quite a lot of car for your money with those things. And I've also managed to extract a promise of extremely good behavior from Jasper for the foreseeable future. That's right, isn't it Jasper? You're gonna be really good, aren't you? A bit more enthusiasm than that. You'd be really good. You're going to be good from now on though, aren't you? Yeah, he's going to be good from now on, or I'm taking the car back. Right, let's go have breakfast. Let's have a look at your Aston Martin Vanquish. Wow, beautiful. Is that where the battery goes? No, that's where the engine goes. Oh. The battery goes underneath. Oh, okay, cool. He clearly knows what he's talking about when it comes to electric car design. Yeah, I wouldn't call it a sun. Right, hang on. Right, in you get them. The primary goal for this little trip, aside from getting a bit of lunch, is getting some new shoes for Jasper. Because his feet are way too big. Uh, or the shoes are too small, depending on your point of view. So today I would like to talk about battery formats because Tesla's new Model 3, that's going to come with a new format for the cells that make up the battery. It's going to be, I think they refer to it generally as a 2170 format. 21 millimeter diameter, 70 millimeters high. The old format that's used in this car and the Model X is the 18650 format, which is 18 millimeter diameter and 65 millimeters high. Tesla is kind of on its own when it comes to these battery cell formats. Most other EV manufacturers use a pouch cell, kind of what it sounds like, a cell that's shaped about the size of a smallish laptop. It's when they were building and designing the Roadster, the 18 650 cells were the only ones which delivered enough power, enough energy density in order to provide the 250 mile range that they were looking for in the Roadster and, and the power necessary to accelerate the vehicle in, in the way that Elon Musk wanted and needed to do to convince the world that EVs were going to be fun and exciting and, and worth doing. So that's how Tesla got started with this format, but then why did it stick with it? Because ultimately, if they wanted to use pouch cells, they could do, of course. Well, there's a massive advantage to using smaller cells. There are some disadvantages. You tend to put a lot more weight into the actual surround of the cell and the, the connectivity of it and all the rest of it. So you do lose a bit of energy density in that respect. But I think the main reason is because of the ability for that cell to dissipate heat, for Tesla to control the temperature throughout the battery pack. If you've got coolant circulating around all of the different cells, then because each cell is relatively small, it's quite difficult for a hotspot to occur within a cell. If you've got a large pouch, for example, what you can have is a situation where one part of the pouch is at a completely different temperature from the other. And, and that is something that you do want to try and avoid. That additional cooling or heating capability does give other benefits as well. It means that you can keep the battery cool whilst charging very quickly or discharging very quickly which is a large part of the reason why Teslas have got so much power off the line and why they can charge so quickly from a supercharger. Over time, the other EV manufacturers are starting to improve the situation with the pouch cells, but the reality is the chemistry that they put in those cells is still more benign, less punchy, holds less energy than the chemistry that goes into the Tesla cells because they are more difficult to control. Ultimately, they're probably a little bit cheaper to manufacture once you've got the factories in place to do that. Tesla has 
offset that disadvantage by making sure that it used a commodity cell to begin with. And ultimately, Tesla has always been aiming a couple of rungs higher than most of the other EV manufacturers in terms of what they want to achieve with their cars. When other manufacturers were thinking it'd be nice to have a 100 mile range, Tesla was thinking 200 is the minimum. You know, and now Tesla's pushing in the direction of 300 miles. You know, other EV manufacturers are still struggling to turn out 150 miles. Now, okay, the, the Bolt is an exception to this. It, it does do over 200 miles of range. It seems like a very capable car. And unfortunately, it is also a very absent car in the UK. So I can't really properly look into that the way I would like. Uh-oh, Jazzy's gone to sleep. So yeah, it's been an interesting decision and it is a real differentiator between Teslas and other EVs. Over time, they've realized that they can actually use a slightly larger cell and increase the power and reduce the wasted weight and space. And so consequently, that's why they've moved to this 2170 cell format. I think they're going to probably stick with that, to be honest. It all depends on, on how things go at the Gigafactory and, and also you know, what battery advancements come, come out in the future, of course. But what they've never done is go, oh, there's going to be a really great cell chemistry coming out in the near future and we all want to use that for our batteries. No, what they've done instead is say, right, we will take the best you've got right now and we'll make it work. Well, we're more or less at our lunch destination, so it's gonna be time for me to try and wake Jasper up, I think. Okay, confession time. I was going to get McDonald's for lunch, but it, it's closed, so yeah. I'm afraid I've got some bad news, Jasper. McDonald's was closed. So we're going to have to get some food from somewhere else. Oh. Run to that seat and run back. Without tripping over. And then back. And back. There we go. Right, now you can go to the bus. Are you going to drive the bus, Jasper? Now I'm gonna get some mummy some chocolates, I think. Try and good boy. Jasper's convinced he's a good boy. I'm not convinced. Step away from the chocolates. In you get them. What a naughty but productive trip. I think those shoes are quite cool. Not sure what mummy's gonna think of them. In you go, Mankate. I told Jasper those were Spider-Man shoes. Much cheaper than getting actual branded Spider-Man shoes. I've got to get on with my general housekeeping bits and bobs. For example, yeah, I think the recycling might need to be taken out. Okay, washing's on. Might give it a bit of a quick hoover around here now. That needs emptying. It's all go in preparation for the weekend. So I was gonna call it a day on the sort of vlogging front, but actually I'm just gonna quickly throw a little bit more into the mix because I just read an interesting article about solid state batteries. So you've got this new solid state chemistry that is being touted by John Goodenough, who is the 94 year old co-inventor of the original lithium ion battery. So this guy knows what he's talking about. And he thinks he's developed a solid state glass electrolyte battery capable of working at low temperatures with very low cycle life degradation. So basically the battery will last a long time. It'll operate at sub-zero temperatures. I mean, it's really, on paper at least, it looks too good to be true. So I'm very much hoping that that will come to pass because it's got three times the energy density of standard lithium ion batteries. Wow, with most of the negatives taken out of it. And honestly, this is the principal reason why I think the idea of waiting for hydrogen fuel cells to come along is so laughable. The idea that hydrogen is gonna be the future is predicated on the concept that batteries are already as good as they're gonna get. 
which is obviously not the case. There are so many different chemistries to try and all it takes is for one of them to turn out to be revolutionary and boom, the whole thing just takes off like crazy. I'm gonna say goodbye now. Go have a quick run, I think, if I can squeeze it in and Jasper will allow me to do that. So I hope you've enjoyed today's vlog post. If you have, remember to like it, share it and subscribe if you haven't already and follow me on Instagram if you don't already. And I will see you tomorrow for the next installment of my daily vlog. Bye. Okay, these, are, these are the first pair of shoes. Oh, cute. These are the second pair. <laughs> oh my God. What have you done? Um, right, did he choose these? Yeah.